Hello, everyone. Welcome to the D Heart House podcast. This is episode 18. I'm coming to you from the backyard. Marjorie and I are out here. She's currently chewing on a stick, burning off some energy. It is a little bit windy right now, so I'm not going to record outside. We're going to go inside. Uh, But today is the first day of fall. It's September 22nd, and it's a gorgeous day outside right now. It's currently in the 70s. We're supposed to have a high of, I think, 92 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, the summer heat has not gone away yet, Uh, but it should be soon. So I will um, run around with Marjorie a little bit, and I'll see you guys inside. has been two weeks since my last yarn confession. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, today's the first day of fall. I have my fall decorations up in the house. I have pumpkin spice uh, wax uh, melting in my wax burner. Yep. Um, and I'm drinking tea and I have apple cider in the fridge and Life is good. I love fall. Fall is my favorite time of year. Um, And I think most knitters would agree. Now, I am in West Texas, and it does not feel like fall yet, Um, but I don't care. (laughs) So, yeah, it is still sleepless shirt weather here. Um, We've had a couple of hundred degree days this week, uh, which is always challenging at work because like walking between the buildings when you're dressed all professionally to go in and teach and you have to walk it's not it's not extremely far it's probably like a block I have to walk uh, but when it's a hundred degrees and there's like zero shade on your walk it's terrible so I want it to cool down. I'm tired of 100 degree weather. Uh, we've had enough of it. I think we're all ready for cooler weather. So if we could just make that happen, that would be great. So anyway, enough about that. Welcome. And uh, yeah, so in this episode, I've got a um, few different sections. I want to start off by talking about Um, sort of a giveaway, okay? Um, Then finished objects, works in progress, acquisitions, then another giveaway for next time, and then um, reading and running. So, yeah. Um, So the first thing I want to talk about is sort of a giveaway for everyone. Uh, If you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, Okay, Um, I announced that I released my first knitting pattern and I've decided to make it free. So it's sort of a giveaway for everyone, Um, mostly for you, my viewers, and those of you who have purchased items from my Etsy shop. Um, I just, I really love this community that we have and I want to be um, supportive in return. So I thought I would share um, this pattern with everyone and make it free. So the pattern is called Kanak. Um, so I'll show you, I finished these socks. Um, so here I have one on the blocker, so you can see um, 
I decided to do something different with the transition between the ribbing and the leg of the sock. So you can see it's like a, like a chevron there. And then we've got this eyelet mock cable down the front of the sock, all the way to the toe, and then the back of the leg. It's kind of hard to see on the blockers. So I have one not on the blockers. You can see, um, right, the cable that goes, the mock cable that goes down the front. So you don't need a cable needle to do this. Um, and yeah, it goes all the way down to the toe, and then you just do a regular toe. So yeah, um, so these are uh, my Kanak socks, and I think they're just the coolest. So um, yeah, this is a free pattern on Ravelry designed by me. Um, so D Hard House Designs. So you're watching the D Hard House podcast podcast. If I can say that word correctly. Um, my Etsy shop is Dehart House Creations. And then I've decided to call my um, my designs on Ravelry uh, just Dehart House Designs. So this is a Dehart House Designs pattern. It is free. It's up on Ravelry and ready for you to download it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this. Uh, the one thing I will say is that I did not write in a heel um, because I use the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is a paid for pattern. It's only a dollar. And I did link it in the pattern. Um, so if you'd like to use the same heel and you don't already have the Fish Lips Kiss Heel pattern, it's only a dollar. Um, and it's a really, I, I love it. Um, which is why I use it all the time because I love it. Uh, but there's a lot of information in the Fish Lips Kiss pattern other than just how to do the heel. So there's more information about um, sizing of your sock as well, the, whole, the entire sock, not just the heel. So um, you feel free to purchase that pattern and use that heel. Um, if you use a different heel, an afterthought heel, OMG, uh, heel and gusset, whatever, there's so many. Um, I mean, just insert the heel of your choice. It's mostly, um, the pattern is mostly um, up here at the cuff, and then the uh, mock cable running down the front and back of the, of the leg. So, um, anyway just a little bit about the pattern. So, uh, yeah, this is my first finished object, uh, as a nice little segue here. Uh, so I designed and finished my Canox socks in a week. Yeah. Labor Day weekend is, was really productive for me. Uh, we went to Dallas and visited family and Michael drove there and back. Thank God. Um, I hate driving in the city. Uh, he is much more experienced with that, having grown up in San Antonio. Um, and I'm from a very small town in Michigan, so I don't do much city driving. I really love that he does it. Um, now the drive to Dallas is not like pure city all the way there. And I could drive uh, at that point, but uh, he drove the whole way, which meant I was able to knit the whole way. So yeah, I started these socks. I knit them concurrently, um, two at a time. I'm really not digging. And uh, it was really nice to knit them concurrently. So I started these Labor Day weekend, and I finished them the next weekend. In fact, the weekend after Labor Day weekend, uh, I had my birthday, so I finished these on Saturday. My birthday was on Sunday, uh, and I turned 30. I'm 30 years old, and I finished these socks still in my, you know, the day before my birthday, so when I was still 29. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, so... Um, Yay! 
happy birthday. I'm 30 now. Um, and I don't care. I don't feel any different. Uh, yeah, so Canox socks. I knit these out of uh, Knit Pick Stroll in the Forest Heather colorway. And Knit Pick Stroll is a 7525 blend of Superwash Merino and Nylon. Um, and I didn't do any contrasting heel or toes, I just did the whole thing in one color. Um, I was originally going to knit these out of a variegated yarn, um, but the pattern was really hard to see, so I went with a more solid um, slash, um, yeah, more of a solid color than a, than a variegated. So if you're going to knit this pattern, I would recommend um, something less crazy um, but maybe a speckled yarn or striped yarn would do better I think the variegated yarn I had was just a little too a little too busy for this so anyway I'd love to see this knit up in all kinds of things so um, yeah go ahead and and get onto Ravelry um, search for Canuck and it's a free pattern you can download that and get started. Yay! Okay. So, moving on, we have uh, another finished object, and that is a gift knit. So, um, I need to weave in the ends today and wash it and block it because the baby shower is on Sunday. Uh, and I need to give this to her then. So, I finished the baby flex. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is just the cutest. This is the cutest little thing. Okay, so this is knit. This is the pattern uh, Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so it's a fingering weight sweater. Um, I used the yarns Heritage Silk Cascade Yarns, which is an 8515 blend of Superwash Merino and Silk, and that's in the color. 5639 which is the solid brown and then the other color is Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering uh, which is an 8020 blend of Superwash Fine Highland Wool and Polyamide and the color is Laurelhurst yeah so this was fun until I went to do the sleeves Mm -hmm. So the body was fun. I really enjoyed it. Then I went to do the sleeves and I had this gaping hole in the armpit. And I was like, there's no way I can leave a gaping hole like that in the armpit of this little baby sweater. His whole hand could fit through that. So, um, you know, when sweater patterns are just like, you know, and then at the bottom pick up four stitches or whatever. Well, I had to go in and pick up like 10 stitches along there and just decrease it out because, because that hole was so big and now there isn't a hole, which is good. But, um, is that something y'all find that you have to do with sweaters is just pick up more stitches than what the pattern calls for, um, when you go to knit the sleeves, um, and then just decrease them out. Is that pretty typical? Because I'm finding that I'm having to do that. Uh, I had to do it here. Um, I didn't do it with my harvest cardigan and I do have holes. Uh, I did do it. I am doing it with my the sweater I'm knitting for myself and I haven't gotten to the sleeves yet on Michael's sweater but I'm pretty sure when I go to knit his sleeves that I will be doing that. So, my question for you is, do you do that as well? Is that pretty standard? Um, are there other ways to get around that? Um, where you don't have to pick up more stitches? I'm curious. If you could comment below, 
uh, that would be amazing. Uh, if you have any uh, recommendations or just, yes, you have to do that. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm new to sweater knitting. I love it. I want to keep doing it. And I'm just curious if there's another way. So anyway, yeah, so um, it's done. Like I said, I need to weave in the ends. I have, I have ends and uh, wash it and block it and gift wrap it. So that's what I'll be doing this weekend with this little baby sweater. Oh yeah, I should probably post a project, um, make a project page on Ravelry for this. And yeah, it's so tiny. It's adorable. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to give that in a couple of days. So I'm very happy that I finished it. And that's it for finished objects. Socks and a sweater. I mean, pff, easy two weeks. <laughs> So, uh, works in progress, I have sweaters. Yeah, sweaters. So, I'm, uh, I have to say, a little burned out on sock knitting. Uh, this knitting a pair every month for a whole year has just kind of got me not loving knitting socks. Like, I don't seem to have fun because it's like, I have to start it this day and I have to end it this day and it just makes it seem more like work than like fun. So I'm um, putting uh, socks on the back burner. Uh, just I, I don't want to so I'm not going to. But I have um, sweaters in the works so I'm working on those instead. So first um, Living in my Mario bag. This is a D Heart House Creations bag in my sweater size. Um, living in here is my Five Shades of Grey sweater. <sighs> okay. Here we go. This thing is massive because, like, it's almost finished. So, <laughs> okay. So, I'll get my yarn it out. So my five shades of gray sweater, I'll say before I hold it up, is the So Faded Sweater by Andrea Mowry. Um, it is not a free pattern, it's a paid for pattern. Um, I'm using five shades of gray <laughs> to knit this. Um, two of the yarns are cloudborn fibers and the other three are Knit Picks Stroll. So, and they're all um, merino nylon blend yarns, so they all feel the same, which is nice. So, I have no idea where I was last time I showed this to you. But as you can see, I finished the first sleeve and I'm now on the second sleeve. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it goes from black at the top to um, like a creamy gray tonal at the bottom. And I really, I'm, I'm really loving this. So um, for the first sleeve, I put a stitch marker on every single decrease so that I could count the decreases and yeah you can totally see them because they were kind of heavy stitch markers and I'm sure it tugged on them a bit but it makes it easy knitting the second sleeve to keep track of those decreases so what I'm doing is um, I'm only doing I'm only marking the last the last decrease I did I'll put a stitch marker there. So when I do another decrease, I'll just move this stitch marker up. Um, and so I'm just counting like I did, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, six decreases with this, this gray. Um, there's one in the transition. Um, and I'm just sort of counting that and holding the sleeves up side by side to make sure that I'm getting the same lengths. 
um, and then that'll be good enough to get the second sleeve. And uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm so excited to finish this. Um, eventually it will get cooler here and then I can wear this. So I'd like to have this finished and ready to go for when, um, when it does get cooler. Which is not going to be tomorrow, <laughs> by any means. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, um, so I said the pattern. I said the yarns. I'm knitting this on US five Chowgu needles, which is a 3.75 millimeter. Um, and then for the ribbing, I'm using US size three, which is a 3.25 millimeter. And I believe those are the needle sizes the pattern calls for. Um, did I swatch? No, because I was lazy. That's okay. It worked out. I keep trying this on. Um, but Angela from the Angela Knits podcast, you're totally right. I should be swatching. I should stop being so lazy. So the next sweater I make, I promise I'll swatch and I'll show it on the podcast. So Anyway, so yeah, I'm on the second sleeve. I would love to have this finished to show you guys next time. I can't make that promise, but that would be an amazing um, goal. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and I will post in, if I haven't already, I can't remember. I've been working on this thing for so long. Um, on my project page on Ravelry, I'll post in there the um, the length of each color that I use because I will say in the pattern for the so faded sweater, uh, Andrea did not mention how how many rows or how many inches. Um, to knit each color. She does say how many rows to do for the transition, but not for, you know, the solid block of that yarn. Um, she does say, like, the length of the sweater you want, divide it by five, and depending on your gauge. But anyway, um, I didn't do that. <laughs> I eyeballed it. Uh, but I'll post the, um, those links in my project page for those of you who are curious. Um, I really wish Andrea would go back and just add in like for this sweater these were the links I used um, as a as a reference point for people wanting to knit this sweater because I loved where the lines hit her model like you know across the chest region the transitions between the colors like you want that in a certain place. Um, and I liked where it hit, where all those lines were on her model. And I wanted them to hit me in the same place. Um, so I'll post my numbers if anyone wants to use that as a, as a reference. So cool. So that's one of the things that I'm working on. Um, another sweater that I'm working on is for Michael, and this is um, another flax. Uh, this is not the flax light, this is the flax, um, which is a worsted weight sweater pattern. Sorry, my Fitbit is buzzing, telling me I got a text message. Okay, um, just making sure it wasn't um, work. So I am knitting, yes, the flax. Uh, I'm knitting this out of Red Heart Worsted Weight Acrylic Yarn. The color is Soft Navy. Um, flax is another free pattern by Tin Can Knits. I am using um, US size 5 needles, which is a 3.75 millimeter. Um, and I'm using Chow Goose. Uh, I believe... That is not the size the pattern calls for for needles. I did have to, to change needle sizes because it I didn't meet gauge. So I kind of swatched Angela, but not really. I didn't like make a whole swatch. Yeah. 
I tend to want to use the yarn. I don't want to do the swatch and like wash it and everything and like cut it from the skein because I would want to use that yarn, but especially with the wools, maybe not with the acrylic, I really should be doing that because washing your garment may change your gauge. So Okay, stop thinking out loud. Alrighty, so um, here we go. Let me just show you. So I have a stitch marker here to sh indicate where I was the last time I showed this to you. So I've added a good, you know, three or four inches to this thing. Uh, it is knit top down. So there's the neck hole at the bottom, right? Yeah, I have a ways to go. Oh, this thing is taking forever. Um, yeah. It feels like it's taking forever. But I did try it on him, and it fits very well. It has um, enough positive ease uh, that he can wear this over uh, a dress shirt, uh, and it's not, like super super big <laughs> so um, it's the right size and I'm, I'm very very happy about that because I did try knitting a sweater for Michael back when we were in grad school and it was way too big <laughs> so um, yeah this is better following a pattern is better so um, yeah I'm this far down from the here's the arm hole and I have a ways to go so I'll just keep chugging along until I get there. Yeah. So that wraps up works in progress. So what we'll talk about now are my acquisitions. So I went to Stitches, Texas in uh, Irving, Texas, which is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, it's actually at the same place where they have the DFW Fiber Fest in the spring. So I was watching the Dramatic Knits podcast, uh, and Steve mentioned that he was going, and he is one of the dyers behind Leading Men Fiber Arts. And I was like, so I was watching this podcast while I was grading exams and Michael walked in and heard this and I was like, oh, I want to go. And he's like, we can go, you know, if you want. Really? <laughs> yeah, so it was kind of like a birthday present to take me to Stitches, Texas and splurge on yarny goodies. So, um, yeah, so I met Steve from uh, Leading Men Fiber Arts and that was amazing. I'm sure I was a total klutz. Um, I was so excited about this whole event that I took no pictures and no videos because I forgot to do that. I was just having so much fun. Uh, so I have none of that to share with you. I'm really sorry. I will, I promise to get better. I mean, I can only get better than doing nothing. So whatever. So let me just show you the awesome things that I picked up at Stitches Texas and they're all in their bags so I apologize in advance for crinkling. Um, so this yeah I stuffed it all in here so I didn't go too crazy um, but yeah okay let's just let's just move this stuff out of the way make some room okay so what do I want to talk about first I want to talk about leading men fiber arts last I went to their booth first <laughs> um, but I'm gonna talk about that last because I have special surprise for you guys uh, so I will um, I guess first I'll talk about the book that I got so I picked up a book about knitting skirts and um, yeah the lady was really nice she had um, 
one of the skirts on a mannequin. She pulled out another one from under the table and showed me um, and gave me some tips about using elastic at the top of the skirt. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, there are some really nice patterns in here. Um, trying to find the one that was on the mannequin. Maybe it's near the, ah, oh, there it is. Okay. And it was in the same gray. Is there anything? Okay. No. Okay. I really like this skirt. And then there's, okay. I have no idea what I'm showing you, but hopefully you can see the skirt. So yeah, I want to knit this. Definitely. This one and like 10 others from this book. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I don't wear many dresses and skirts, um, but they are really comfy and it would be neat to have more than just sweaters. I mean, knitting bottoms is, I mean, I don't think I would ever knit myself a pair of pants and wear pants or knitted shorts, but I would wear a knitted skirt. So yeah, um, so I picked up a book about knitting skirts by Candace Eisner. Is Strick part of her name? I feel like it's not, but anyway. Yes, I have um, glanced through this and I uh, haven't tried any of the patterns yet, but I'm looking forward to it. So I'm going to add this book to my bookshelf. Um, what, Mr. Phone? Okay. So then I, um, I picked up some fiber, um, I'll take this out of the bag. So this is from, there we go. This is from Blue Mule Fiber of Bu Blue Mule Farm in Fayetteville, Texas. And um, I asked her, she said they don't have a shop, they just have the farm. And she had some gorgeous fiber and yarn and some of those um, Luca needles. Um, so I got to see and touch and feel these brand new needles everyone is raving about. I did not purchase them because I'm actually not a fan of wood needles. Um, I tried some laminated or some some wood needles from knit picks that have a coating on them and I first of all the needles were too small and they broke but other than that uh, I didn't really care for it the the coating kind of came off and I don't know I don't know why I don't know if it was the yarn or my tension or the oils for my skin or I don't know but I did not enjoy the experience so I did not want to drop a pretty penny on needles that I was afraid of not liking so I didn't get any uh, but for those of you who use them and love them that's cool I'm not dissing at all I have not tried them so I I cannot say but I didn't want to spend that much money and then find out I didn't like them so but I got to finally touch and feel them, um, which you can't do through a podcast. So um, for all of you who have been showing them, thank you for showing them. They've been gorgeous and they're gorgeous in person and just as much as on the podcast. Um, and I totally sidetracked onto needles there. So let me come back to uh, uh, Blue Mule Farm. So I picked up some fiber from her booth and it is, this color is called Blue Bird and it is, I like this, 
19.5 micron merido. I have about four ounces here according to the tag. So she had this beautiful um, rainbow colored um, braid, but I'm not really a rainbowy brights person. So I asked, Michael came with me, which was really fun. I got to share this experience with him. And so I was like, blue or rainbow? Which one's more me? And he said blue. So we went with Bluebird. Yep. And I reminded him that I want a spinning wheel. And he rolled his eyes. <laughs> it's fine. I like my drop spindle. Okay. Um, so yeah, I picked up some fiber. I... Okay. Combine some things together. I... Aha, uh -huh, yes, yes. I stopped at the Stephen B. booth. Come on. You can do it, camera! Is that not inspiring you? Whatever, it says Stephen B. on it. Okay. So I stopped at the Stephen B booth, which is filled with neons and colorful brightness, which I just said isn't really me. Um, and it was the only uh, booth that I noticed that had Hedgehog. So Hedgehog drew me in. I had to look at that. Um, and then I was like, well, but there's this brand I haven't tried yet there. And it's Woolen Boone. And this isn't like crazy neon colorful, um, but it's these pretty greens and blues with speckles. And yeah, some pinky peaches and sorry, sorry, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so I picked up um, Woolen Boone instead of Hedgehog because I want to try new. I want to try new stuff. So, um, yes, the Hedgehog was gorgeous, and yes, it was all like amazing. Uh, but like I said, I want to try a new brand. So I'm gonna try some Woolen Boone. Wicked pretty yarn for all. I think that's pretty cool. And there's a glare from my lights. Anyway, so I picked that up from the Stephen B stand. Um, I also picked up, so from a different booth, oh, they even had a sticker on their bag. Oh, it's the same thing as on the card. So, um, I stopped in at U2 Yarn Fiber Company. And they have um, eco-friendly yarn and fiber. So um, hand-dyed, nature-inspired, eco-friendly. So I picked up a skein of their Super Sock 4-ply, which is a 75-25 merino nylon blend. 100 grams, which is 437 yards, yada yada. And... Let's cut out the glare. There we go. Yep. So I got this nice green color with uh, purple speckles in it. Um, yeah. They had a gorgeous, gorgeous um, neutral colors um, with the speckles. And yeah, so this is mostly green. It's got a little bit of blue. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and the purple speckled in. So I'm really excited to, um, to knit with this as well. And let's see, another one I stopped at was uh, Twisted Owl Fiber Studio. And these two are hilarious. Um, so I believe it's a husband and wife team. 
and I chatted with the husband and he was showing me these ginormous knitting needles and their projects and um, they were a blast to talk to. So if you haven't checked out Twisted Owl Fiber Studios, you should. Um, they also have a podcast. Um, he said they don't have many episodes, um, but they're hilarious. So I bet their podcast is hilarious. And it's something like the worsted podcast or something. I should have written it down. But like I said, I was totally like having fun and enjoying myself and I didn't think about anything else. So they had gorgeous yarn. Gorgeous. So I decided to get um, this guy, uh -huh, which is called campfire is the color oh my gosh and my light is kind of washing it out let me see if I just turn this lamp off if that's better and it totally is okay cool yeah oh my gosh okay I had to decide between this and I think the other color was like Wicked or something. It was like Halloween-y. Um, and Michael and I like to go camping and so I was like, oh, do I want Halloween or Campfire? And we went with Campfire. Uh, so this is their Lux sock, which is an 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon. This is a 150 gram skein, which is 600 yards. And I was like, what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm totally excited to knit with this. And I totally want to check out their shop again online. Okay. Cool. And... got distracted. So last but not least, we have Leading Men Fiber Arts. Let me just dump this back out. Okay. So I went straight into Leading Men Fiber Arts booth and introduced myself to Steve, told him I have this podcast, which of course is not um, as well known as his podcast. Um, and he was so nice, you guys, so nice. So um, after chatting with him, I picked out my yarn. So I picked out um, Gothic Queen. And now, of course, the lighting is crap. Whatever. Oh my gosh. I can't win because it's cloudy today and I've told you guys before I need natural light but I said I need to podcast so gothic queen um which is sort of sort of movie okay um and I got the showstopper base uh which is 75 25 merino nylon I believe I got all showstopper let me just check Nope, I got one that isn't. So Leading Men Fiber Arts, there we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, so Gothic Queen. So on the same base, Showstopper, I got, I just read it and forgotten. Reconditioned Punishment. It's like brown, gold, gray, black. Okay. I'm, I don't know if this is going to stripe or be variegated, but I'm excited. Then on a different base, so this is Spotlight, which is 8020 Superwash BFL and nylon. So I have no BFL. I've not knit with BFL before. And so I told Michael, I have to get some BFL and try it. So this color is industrial. It's blues and grays. 
and it's really pretty. Yep, so I got some BFL nylon. So I picked out these lovelies. And I went up to go check out, and he was like, you should pick one out to give away on your podcast. And I was like, no, you're kidding. He was serious, guys. So I picked out one for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You ready? I was nice. No. <laughs> so this one is called The Great Sweater Debate. It is on their showstopper base, which is a 7525 Merino nylon. And it's gorgeous. So it's a gray base and it's speckled with all the colors. Yep. Orange, blue, red, green, teal, just oh yeah. Oh yeah. So this is a giveaway. This is for you guys. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Okay, yeah. See that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, lucky for you guys that not many people watch my podcast, so the chances of you winning are really high. And if you don't enter this giveaway, oh my gosh, I'm giving away a skein of yarn from Leading Men Fiber Arts. Okay? Okay, I thought this day would never come when I could give away a skein of Leaning Men Fiber Arts. Okay, have I have I hyped this up enough for you guys? Okay, so here's what you have to do to enter the giveaway for this skein of yarn. Okay, you need to join my Ravelry group, which is D Heart House Podcast. Okay, that is where I post show notes. Um, and knit-alongs and giveaways, okay? So join the group, become a member of the group, and then there will be um, a discussion, which I'll call Episode 18 Giveaway or Leading Men Fiber Arts Giveaway. Yeah, let's do that one. Leading Men Fiber Arts Giveaway, okay? Go there. All you have to do is answer this question. The question is, What's your favorite knit in the fall? Now, whether it's something you've already knit and you like wearing it in the fall, or it's something you like working on in the fall, like maybe you don't like to knit blankets over the summer, and so maybe you like to knit those in the fall or something. And if there's a particular pattern, um, it would be amazing if you could link it to share with others. So, excuse me. So to enter the giveaway for this skein of yarn, all you need to do is join uh, my Ravelry group, which is D Heart House Podcast. Um, you need to answer the prompt, which is, what's your favorite knit in the fall? It's, that's it. That's it. So I um, have the thread open at this point um, with the podcast up, and you're watching this the uh, the topic is up and ready for you to comment um, and I will close this out in two weeks when I do my next when I record my next podcast so two weeks from now oh my gosh I have to look at a calendar so this will close I'm sorry I should have looked this up beforehand so today's September 22nd so in two weeks, that will be October 6th, okay? So I'm going to have that thread close at, midnight on Thursday night. So midnight, October 5th, that will close so that on Friday morning, I can draw a winner and announce it on the next podcast, which I usually record on Fridays, so Friday the 6th, okay? So uh, go in, join the group, answer the prompt by October 5th, and then on the 6th, the 6th, I will announce the winner of this gorgeous skein of yarn. Okay, guys. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. 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 Yeah, so these are all of my 
all of my goodies, this doesn't count, this is for you, uh, from Stitches Texas. I was, I was modest, kind of. <laughs> okay, so, um, now we're into the last segment, which is reading and running. Um, yes, so, I have been reading Game of Thrones book five, which is A Dance with Dragons, and Harry Potter book one, which is what? The Sorcerer's Stone, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I haven't been reading too much. Um, school's back in session and it's just crazy busy. Uh, but I have been reading a couple pages um, before going to bed. So I'm slowly making progress there. Definitely nowhere near finishing either of those books, which is sad. But, uh, yeah. I've mostly been reading Harry Potter just because it's a much lighter read than Game of Thrones. And I can handle that right before bed. So, yeah. But it's a really fun read. And I, I just read... Was this last night? Yeah, it was last night. That Hagrid knits. I didn't get that from the movies. Granted, I've only seen the first three, four. I haven't seen all the Harry Potter movies. But anyway, in the first three or four movies, the ones that I've seen, <laughs> I don't remember seeing Hagrid knit. So that was a really fun surprise last night because in bed I was, I turned over, I looked at Michael and I was like, Hagrid knits. And he's like, yeah, Hagrid knits. <laughs> he's read them. Whatever. It was funny. Um, yeah, so I'm reading a little bit. Definitely not a lot. And I don't, I, I have not tried audiobooks, but I do know that, um, I'm, I'm a visual person and I kind of need to see, I need to see it to be able to process it. So, um, I'm not sure that an audiobook would really work for me. Um, I need to see the word to really get it, so I don't know. I could give it a try. I'm just not too um, hopeful. But it would save a lot of... I mean, I could get through more stories that way for sure, because I could listen while doing other things. I'm just not sure that I would actually comprehend what I'm listening to if... I didn't also have the text in front of me, so I don't know. I like reading anyway. I like holding the book and the smell of the book and the feel of the book. Um, it's just, it's a whole experience. It's not just listening to listen and then get through it and be done. Um, I really like enjoying the whole experience, so I don't know. Hmm. Anyway. Um, running. I also have not been doing much of that. Um, like I said, school's back in session and it's really busy. So, um, with us going to Dallas for Labor Day weekend and for stitches, uh, that meant there were two weekends where I couldn't really do much work. Um, since we were on the road and away and spending time with people. So, um, since we don't have any road trips planned in the near future, uh, I anticipate being able to get, I consider caught back up. I'm not behind, but I like to be ahead and I'm not ahead anymore. I'm right on schedule, which makes me feel behind. So I'm looking forward to getting caught back up as in being ahead again. So if something does come up, then it's okay. Like, oh, I've already planned, you know, two weeks in advance. So if something comes up, it's okay. But if I'm right on schedule and something comes up, I still have to do that planning, even though I now have this new 
thing to deal with. So you guys understand what I'm saying. I know you do. Okay. I can stop jabbering about it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get ahead this weekend and then I'm hoping this next week I can do my running in the morning again um, instead of lesson planning in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. However, uh, I have been losing weight because I think I've been so busy with school and like um, over the summer I was you know, home all day long and I could just eat whenever I got hungry. But if I'm in the middle of teaching and I'm hungry, I have to still wait until lunch to go eat. So I haven't been able to just snack all day long, which I think is helping. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm active. I'm not just sitting behind a desk all day. I'm, I'm lecturing. I'm walking around the classroom. I'm going from building to building. I'm so, um, so it's kind of nice that I've, I've lost a, a couple pounds just by going about my usual day. So throw in some, uh, some running and that should help. So anyway, um, we knitters, it's tough cause we sit and knit and it's not really much of an active thing. So it's kind of hard to make yourself put down the knitting and hop on a treadmill or an elliptical and do something else. So, um, I'm, I'm working on it. It's a thing. And, uh, it's okay if I just don't make as much. I have so many years left in my life. I will eventually make everything I want. So it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Cool. So, um, if you stuck around this long, thank you. <laughs> um, please hit the, uh, subscribe button, um, and thumbs up if you like this episode. And please, please, please enter the giveaway. I'm so excited to give this skein of yarn away. And, um, I hope you all enjoy the, uh, Kanak pattern and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks to announce the giveaway and talk about more knitting, reading, and running. So happy knitting guys. Take care. I'll see you in two weeks.